During the era of steam on America's railroads, thousands of different types or classes of locomotives were built. While examples of many different locomotive classes made it into preservation, the vast majority did not. One of the more interesting examples that was sadly not saved was known as the T-1 built for the Pennsylvania Railroad in the mid-1940s. These were rather unique locomotives featuring a duplex drive system with two separate sets of cylinders, each powering four drive wheels. The T-1s were built for fast passenger service, and it was even said that some of the locomotives were clocked in excess of 140 miles an hour. In 1956, after an exceedingly short career, the final T-1 met its fate with the scrapper's torch. The story might seem to end there. However, in 2013, a group was formed with the goal of bringing the T-1 back to life. Known as the T-1 Trust, the group was inspired by some British railway enthusiasts who had built their own full-sized mainline steam locomotive that was patterned after an extinct class of UK locomotives. Over the last several years, the T-1 Trust has been working hard to plan and fabricate a brand new T-1 locomotive from the ground up, one piece at a time, as well as fundraise for this monumental project. Gary Bensman, Wolf Fengler, Jason Johnson, and Brad Noble of the T-1 Trust join us to talk about the project, the history of the original T-1 locomotives, and the challenges faced in building a large steam locomotive in the 21st century. This is the story of bringing a legend back to life. This is the story of the 5550. Building a steam locomotive is no easy task. It takes a considerable amount of planning to turn cold pieces of metal into a speed demon to the rails. General Manager Jason Johnson, Mechanical Engineering Team member Wolf Fengler, and Gary Bensman of the T-1 Trust Mechanical and Boiler Committees give us an overview of the project, mechanical stats on the T-1, and a look at some of the challenges of building a brand new steam locomotive from scratch. The PR T-1 Trust is a like-minded group of individuals that are fans of the Pennsylvania Railroad, and specifically the T-1 itself and we've got together to try to uh, bring one back from uh, the scrap. The PRR T1, the Penzi Class T1, was a locomotive designed by the Pennsylvania Railroad Engineering Department to answer the need for high-speed uh, passenger service. So it was about, a, I think, a 1,000 horsepower engine at 100 miles an hour, and the first prototypes were built by Baldwin. A, a, duplex locomotive was two driven engines under one rigid frame and, and boiler. No articulation to it. So the T1 is a four, 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 four lead wheels, four drive wheels on the first engine, four drive wheels on the second engine, four trailing wheels. Well, in rough numbers, the T1 will be about 122 feet long, about 16 feet tall, It'll weigh on the order of 428 tons and run on 80-inch drivers. It'll develop about 65,000 pounds of tractive effort from 300 PSI steam, expanding in four cylinders, and each cylinder has a 19 and 3 quarter inch bore and a 26 inch long stroke. Well, the engine is built on a 68 foot long rigid frame. Now that rigid frame meant there were fewer flexible steam connections to maintain and actually more exact control over the running gear alignment, which is of course favorable for high speed operation. Well, between the two prototypes and the two groups of production units, there was a total of 52 of the T1 class that were built between 1942 and 1946. Our locomotive, of course, carries the number 5550, which is the next number in the sequence from the production units. The uh, methods of construction that vary are going to be different in the reconstruction from the original. The original was a one-piece cast frame. You know, technology has advanced past that, particularly in welding, so that the new construction will be weldments, build-up weldments, incorporating castings, so that all ends up a one-piece frame again, mostly welded construction, that then can be um, stress relieved in a furnace and then finish machined to the same tolerances as the original. The main flaw that really remains to be addressed is the valve gear. The majority of the T1 locomotives were equipped with Franklin Type A poppet valves. 
The system was activated by a complicated series of levers and located in difficult to service boxes that are tucked into the frame. And the valves themselves actually had problems with cracking as well. We'll be equipping 5550 with Franklin Type B valve gear, which was actually available back in the day, but some internal politics prevented its use. The Type B is actually a rotary valve gear and it has a camshaft, not unlike those that are in car engines. It's much simpler and can be positioned in easier to maintain locations. And we'll of course be looking at the design and the metallurgy and even the cam profiles to address that cracking problem for the valve itself. Now some of you are probably saying, well, what about that slipping problem that everybody talks about? Well, really the engineering portion of that issue is largely addressed with changes made to the spring rigging between the two prototypes and the production versions. Now, the human portion of that issue we will address as we train our crews. You see, the crews back in the day were used to running two-cylinder K4 locomotives, which had you know, basically 200 PSI boiler pressure. When you have to switch to running something with four cylinders and 300 PSI at your disposal, you have to operate the machine differently. Uh, the challenges are always the same when uh, doing a full-size replica, and that is raising the money. So the technology is all there. We have all the, the know-how to do that. The problem is always uh, fundraising, and uh, we continue to do that and take dollars and spend them on the, the construction of the locomotive. Uh, there'll be no major outward differences that uh, most people will see. The construction methods will be uh, slightly different, and then there'll be uh, technology that modern railroads require to operate on. The Pennsylvania Railroad T1 Trust is building the locomotive as a nonprofit group. The PRT1 Trust group is a group that came together uh, seven or eight years ago, and the locomotive is being built in pieces, parts all over the country, everywhere from out in Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, and the main part, the boiler, is currently being built in St. St. Louis, Missouri by our contractor out there. The question we get often asked is where will we do final assembly? That location has not been chosen yet. We've been given two or three options and we will keep looking at those options as time gets closer, as the parts get bigger, and then we're ready to mate the frame and the boiler together. That's when we'll come to a final location to assemble the locomotive. Currently, it is being built as a coal burner, but we recognize the high likelihood that it will come out as an oil burner or some other alternative fuel when the time comes. Well, it starts with having people willing to commit themselves to the endeavor. And that's not only on the project management and technical sides, but also on the funding side. Now, on the technical side, it starts with lots and lots of research. You have to gather together as many blueprints as you can find, and we're lucky that we had a lot of them available for this locomotive and technical documents as well. Any missing pieces have to be filled in using engineering intuition, basically a deep understanding of fundamental engineering principles, steam locomotive design, and of course steam locomotive history. You then have to review the design against current codes and standards and make adjustments as necessary. In the case of the T1, most of those have come from adapting the boiler to be of welded construction under current FRA and ASME standards. You also have to assess the available fabrication techniques for various parts and determine what makes the most economic sense. Then you establish your preferred build sequence and start fabricating as funds become available to do so. We get this question a lot, what parts of the original T1 survive? There are very few parts. There's a couple known whistles. There's some builder's plates, front number plates off locomotives. Uh, there are tender trucks saved that are in Altoona, Pennsylvania that got put underneath of a specially built flat car. But other than that, there is no other major parts that survived the scrapping of a Pennsy T1. Uh, several years ago, we acquired a tender. It came off of a, a Pennsylvania Railroad 2104 J1 class locomotive. Uh, it is very similar to the original T1 tender. Unfortunately, none of those exist. So we were able to get the actual same class of tender, slight variations to it. We will have to add streamlining and a couple of modifications to the existing tender that we've purchased to make it feasible. It saved us two to three million dollars by taking this option. We were glad to take that and we look forward to finishing that tender up. The current status of the locomotive is we're about 35% complete by weight. So the, it's difficult to gauge the construction of a locomotive. We found that that is the easiest way to do it. Is uh, We're estimating to complete the locomotive sometime late 2020, 2030. If a big donor comes up and donates several million dollars, we can speed that up by multiple number of years. Despite not even being in service for a full decade, the T1 has quite an interesting history. Brad Noble is the founder and chairman of the T1 Trust, 
he shares with us about the history of these locomotives and their careers that were tragically cut short. By the 1940s, the Pennsylvania Railroad had a rather robust electrified network east of Harrisburg. However, west of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, the catenary ended. Management at the Pennsylvania Railroad desired a steam counterpart to its wildly successful GG1 electric locomotive to use for blue ribbon passenger service between Harrisburg and points west, including Chicago and St. Louis. The design requirements for the new T1 locomotive were extremely demanding. A radical new design was required to handle an 880 ton train, that's 11 heavyweight passenger cars, at a sustained speed of 100 miles an hour. In actual road testing in 1944, one of the early T1 locomotives far exceeded these design specifications, hauling a 1,280 ton train, that's 16 passenger cars at 100 miles per hour. Now imagine uncoupling half that consist and running with only eight passenger cars. Under these circumstances, reports of T1 locomotives reaching speeds of 140 miles an hour on the straight, pan-flat Fort Wayne racetrack between the engine facility at Crestline, Ohio and Chicago become extremely plausible. The service life of the T1 class began in 1942 with the production of two demonstrator units, 6110 and 6111 known as Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers because of their futuristic appearance. These were built by Baldwin in Philadelphia. In March of 1945, the War Production Board recommended the Pennsylvania Railroad build 50 T1 locomotives. The planners in Washington, D.C. anticipated the fall of Germany and the need to move troops quickly from the East Coast to the West Coast for Pacific deployment. To speed production, two groups of T1s would be produced simultaneously, 25 at the Pennsylvania Railroad's Altoona shops and 25 in Philadelphia at the Baldwin Locomotive Works. Two months later, in May of 1945, World War II in Europe ended. As it turns out, the War Production Board had no idea about the Manhattan Project. And six months after the T-1 order was approved, on September 2, 1945, the atomic bomb ended World War II. And two months after that, in November 1945, the first production fleet T-1, number 5500, rolled out of the shops in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Essentially, the T-1 locomotives were out of a job before they were built. In September of 1945, just as soon as they could after World War II ended, the Pennsylvania Railroad took delivery of two E-7 diesel locomotives. In an ironic twist of fate, these two diesels arrived at their duty assignment in Harrisburg on the same day as the first two T-1 production units arrived from Altoona. The economic writing was on the wall. Diesels cost 32 cents per mile to operate versus 58 cents per mile for the T1. In 1948, the Pennsylvania Railroad made the decision to dieselize all of its crack passenger trains. And at that time, most of the T1s were downgraded to haul heavy mail trains. In a mere 12 years, the T1 managed to leave an indelible mark on the world of railroading. But in 1953, the Pennsylvania Railroad put to the torch 52 of the most beautiful steam locomotives ever made. Locomotives designed by Raymond Lowy, creator of the Coca-Cola bottle. Locomotives that had been clocked at 140 miles an hour at the head of their world-famous Broadway Limited. The Pennsylvania Railroad sold each of their T1 class locomotives for $31,049 to the scrapyards. Not one was saved as an example of one of the last steam locomotives made in America. So why rebuild a T1? The members of the T1 Trust discuss the importance of this project, how the foundation was formed, and the plans for the future of Locomotive 5550, including an anticipated attempt to break the world speed record for a steam locomotive. Uh, the group is headquartered out of Pottstown, Pennsylvania, but it is actually, the group is really all over the country, spread out all the way to California, and our members are worldwide, so uh, there's no one particular place. We are spread out wherever we need to be. The T1 Trust is an all-volunteer organization with hundreds of members located mainly in the United States. However, we have members located all over the globe. There's a core group of 30 or so responsible for the day-to-day -day activities of the organization. Why build a T1? Because Pennsylvania Railroad didn't save one. They saved a lot of engines in their historic collection, but they did not save their most modern, advanced, high-tech engines. So we're going to have to correct the historical record and fill it in with a new T1. 
factors that make it a worthy candidate for for reconstruction would be the unique construction of it, the duplex drive, two four-wheeled engines, and uh, really the history of the engine that put in such a service record of high-speed passenger service, easily 100 miles an hour for most of the history of it. Well, it all comes back to model railroading, right? And in October of 2013, I learned about a live steam model of a locomotive called Tornado, which had a very interesting backstory. A group of rail fans in Great Britain were lamenting the fact that every example of the A1 peppercorn locomotive had been scrapped. They decided that if they all donated, they might in time be able to build their own A1 from scratch. And after 16 years, they did it. Within days of my learning about the Tornado Project, I just knew that somebody had to build a T1. So I started the T1 Trust. I cobbled together a website and got a PayPal donate button. I reached out to Ross Rowland, the man behind the American Freedom Train, and Ross gave me some pointers and put me in touch with his long-term associate, Wes Camp. Early on, Wes and I traveled to Washington, D.C. and met with the Federal Railroad Administration, where we developed relationships and gained some valuable insight. Through the T1 Trust website, I began to meet other people willing to help, and the whole T1 Trust has developed almost organically from there. There are a lot of opportunities to operate this T1 when completed. We have been approached by several regionals of short line railroads to operate the locomotive when complete. We have not gone to any of the class ones this time. As management changes within the class ones every couple of years, it's not really beneficial for us to make any plans without the locomotive being complete. So once the locomotive is close to being complete, we'll approach them and make those opportunities known. Yeah, we get the question all the time about modern uh, devices to be used on class one railroads when we're out there. We will do whatever they want us to do on that. So cab signals, BTC, or the locomotive will all be incorporated in as we go. Yeah, we get this question a lot about the speed record. Obviously, it's a, a part of our mission on that. The biggest plan, the biggest single place to do that is at Pueblo, Colorado, at the FRA test facility they have there. That place is designed for high speed running, no crossings and uh, high-speed testing of trains here in the United States. There's no other facility in the United States that is conducive to allowing high-speed running with a brand new steam locomotive. So that is the most likely location that it will be done. We are hoping in 2022 to have several open houses that will allow visitors to come out and check out our uh, locomotive boiler, all the components, pieces, parts that we've manufactured, wheels up to this point, and uh, have several talks by members of the T1 Trust. The T1 Trust is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. The best way to donate is to visit the Trust's website and click on the Fundraising Center. There you'll find options ranging from plans to build your very own Lego T1 to an opportunity to sponsor an entire driver wheel and have your name cast in. For individuals interested in seeing or riding behind the T1, the best opportunity might be to join the T1 Trust's Founders Club. Members of the Founders Club receive reasonable access to the locomotive at all times. Founders Club members also receive reserved seating on the first excursion train pulled by 5550. There are other perks as well, including a limited edition print of the 5550 launch painting signed and numbered by the artist Jonathan Clay. It may seem like semantics, however, at the end of the day, the T1 Trust isn't building a replica. The T1 Trust has painstakingly spent thousands of hours in engineering, design, and research. We've combed the Pennsylvania State Archives for every blueprint and engineering drawing the Pensy created for the 52 T1 locomotives it produced. The last T1 built by the Pennsylvania Railroad was numbered 5549. The T1 Trust is building the next locomotive of the class, 5550. Well, that's the story of the 5550. Thanks for joining me for this special look at the construction of the first mainline steam locomotive in the United States in well over half a century. If you'd like to learn more about this project, volunteer, or donate to the T1 Trust, please visit t1trust.org. I'll see you next Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific time for an all-new railroading adventure right here on the YouTube channel. That's all for now. Until next time, I'm Mike Armstrong. I'll see you down the line. Thanks for watching.